Hey River Camp, we have got some exciting news for you. We may not be able to gather as we normally do, but we are taking River Camp online. For one day only, we are going to bring you a taste of River Camp. It's not going to be the same, we all know that, but it is going to be worth engaging with. Gather your family, gather your friends, hey, even get together with some of your church friends that you normally come to River Camp with. And let's make the most of this day, Sunday, the 30th of August. Get it in your diary. Subscribe to the Elim Pentecostal Church YouTube page because that's where we're going to be. And let me tell you, there is going to be something for every single generation right from little fishes all the way through to yes you parents adults it's for you we have got an amazing day you'll be able to find out more from the program which is going to be on our Facebook page check that out I'm sure we'll email it to you as well but make sure you get the date in your diary spread the word around it's going to be a great day as we gather for River Camp online good morning Wherever you are watching from, we are really glad that you have joined us. Now, over the summer, we're just doing one service each Sunday with a predominant style. Today is the adult contemporary service, but it will also include communion. Don't worry if you haven't got your stuff ready. Following the sermon, there will be a song right before communion, and you can just go and get whatever stuff you need at that point in time. Now, we've just got a couple of notices before going into worship. In the last week, uh, Wellerbrook Council have unfortunately needed to introduce some greater restrictions in our area due to an increase in COVID-19 infections. And so for now, we are unable to open Wollaston building to show the service as we have been over the last few weeks, but we will review this in September. And secondly, at the beginning of the service, you would have just watched River Camp excitedly announce that for one day on Sunday the 30th of August, their camp will be online. Usually a bunch of people from this benefice go to their camp uh, over that weekend, the bank holiday weekend. Obviously, it's different this year. Uh, River Camp's vision is that we would encounter God experience identity and explore family. It's a blend of worship and teaching and ministry with programs for all ages. And it's led by some of the most creative and engaging leaders in the UK. So this is another opportunity to spiritually feed ourselves, just like Spring Harvest and New Wine. And um, both of those organizations and now River Camp have worked really hard to get their material online for us and so like those others i just cannot recommend river river camp highly enough so just go to the elam pentecostal churches uh, on youtube and you'll be able to watch the whole day from there and the details are also in this week's news sheet so let's pray as we come to worship holy spirit you are so welcome here as we take time to stop again and just be with you. Will you nourish us deep within, Lord? Father, whatever, uh, whatever has happened this week, whatever has been our experience this week, we now just place it in your hands and we choose to place it uh, in, under your gaze, in your presence. And we say, Father, would you restore? Would you heal? Would you forgive? Amen. Because I need to know 
with me. 
be thrown into the midst of the sea. I mean, when the lockdown first came for me, I found it quite difficult in a lot of ways. I went to the shops and I really found it quite difficult. In some ways, how, how can people be so selfish, selfish in some ways? That's how I really felt. People were being, I, I saw all the stuff off the people, go, try to get toilet rolls, try to get, protect, get, try to get basic stuff, not even any, nothing on the shelves. People were just grabbing everything. And then in, in the first instance, I just, it just made me feel quite depressed and a bit low. And, I, and in one way, I didn't like that. But as time's gone on, shops have had got a bit more organised. They've got restrictions on people. And we've been able to manage our own shopping a bit more better. But we've had good people around us from the church who've helped to support us and help us to get us our shopping and uh, bits of bobs if we can't get them. As time's gone on now, we don't need that so much because things have become a bit more easy on the shop, online shopping and things. But for a long time, we did order 
Amazon was becoming our main shopping tool plus plus um, a local marketplace where we got all our fruit and veg and our local bread. Um, and for, for, for my wife, she she had to start working from home and so for, since March she's been working from home which has been oh dear not your wife at home working but actually our relationship has grown we've got closer we've under we understand each other never have a crossword really we might have the odd crossword occasionally but not generally we've i feel the relationship has grown through the lockdown and she's been able to go back eventually she's been able to go back to archery do her with, with with new rules and regulations there and I've been able to enjoy that it's been quite nice going on a Sunday morning contemplating having a real relax and thinking well at least the church is not here but there's somewhere where I can go and, and, and be meditate and, and just enjoy what's going on <coughs> and do something we generally also we've, I've been facing new experiences I've, I've had to recharge my batteries my, my work stopped before lockdown and I didn't for six five four or five months I didn't do work um, I went on I was my contracts changed and I went on to bank hours but now in the last couple of weeks that's all been sorted out so now I'm doing some more work within the community leading on from that I've been helping people in the community taking a look taking my dog taking my person taking um, shopping to a local person on the Queensway estate and then walking her dog because she's visually impaired and she didn't feel safe going out on her own and then with my local neighbour knocking on her door and sometimes getting a bit of shopping and at one stage we did go and get the papers for a couple of weeks and also we found that the local don't normally have much contact with them but so we've started we've started to support each other and people have said if you need something just knock on our door and, and so forth um but generally we feel that generally that when when things happen god doesn't just shut things we we're here for a new we're here for a season this is this is a season what's going on and i believe that when things shut God opens new opportunities for us and opens new experiences for us and I feel that in my life God has opened new experiences and new opportunities for me which have helped me to develop and and to move forward I mean I haven't seen my I haven't seen my family since last year um, and it's been a bit sad because my mum's been in hospital had a major upper hip operation and haven't been able to see her Grandma's in a residential home and I haven't been able to see her. She's in lockdown. All these things I've had to cope with, but I still feel positive about life. And if I think if you've got God in your life and you've got Jesus at the centre of everything, you can you can't go too wrong. Hi, uh, good morning. I have another poem for you, and this is called um, Lord I Feel Old. So, Lord, I feel old. I've dealt with too much stress. I'm way past my prime. I'm not feeling at my best. My looks have gone. My hair has gone. And where is that waistline? It's all gone so fast. What have I done with time? I used to have a chisel jaw, and now I've got three chins. I need to do something, Lord. But where do I begin? Beauty comes with age, my son. It's seen in the eyes. Youth is just pretty, full of surprise. Your eyes reflect your heart and I can see what's right in yours. My, you've been a busy boy. Let's get about some chores. First, let's get some love in there. We'll massage that right in. Your heart is at your centre. This is where you should be in. My goodness, we'll need a lot. For your sins, we will atone. Where is my hammer? Let's break up this stone. We'll throw in some joy. Also good for your soul. You need a happy heart. That's a primary goal. We'll throw in some wisdom, some righteousness. I think I'll make you humble. I need you to stick at this. I don't want to see you stumble. Lord, this is an awful lot, whatever will be the cost. Well, constant worship, constant prayer. We don't want you getting lost. Your life can be so wonderful, but you need to be good at giving. 
Let's get rid of those grudges. Let's make you so forgiving. Love me, your God, with all your heart, your soul and your mind. We'll take away that nasty streak. I think I'll make you kind. I've filled you to the very top. You'll never have to labour. And all that love I've given you, well, save some for your neighbour. There you go, you're ready. A disciple, very suitable. You're old, you're grey, you're wrinkled. And oh, so very beautiful. Today's reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life. Focus on uh, verse 4 of that psalm Ezra has just read for us, Psalm 23. It says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley. And the King James, the King James Version uh, puts it this way. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. That phrase, the shadow of death, I've been really uh, struck by that just uh, recently. Shadows are powerful. And uh, right now I'm filming in, in Bojet Church and there are shadows everywhere and it's gone a bit darker because there's a, on a steaming hot day we have a storm brewing overhead. Uh, in the movies, in particularly older ones, when someone is in their uh, final hours, like on, on death row or, or something like that, they will sometimes recite this bit of the psalm. It's not talking about spiritual darkness. It's talking about those challenging moments of life when it feels like some horrible, scary shadow has just come over us. And this psalm makes a really bold declaration that even when we go through the most frightening times, we do not need to fear. Fear is, uh, is powerful and it can uh, be debilitating. You know, we're living in a time when fear has uh, gripped not just our nation, but across the nations, in a way not seen or experienced since uh, my grandparents' generation. So how do we, the church, respond? Tozer, who is a theologian, a theologian and a, an author, uh, he, he said this, a scared world needs a fearless church. A scared world needs a fearless church. And he's right. In the second half of verse 4 in this psalm, it tells us why uh, we do not need to fear those tough times. We do not need to fear the shadow of death. And it's precisely because of the transformational truth of who our God is, of his nature and character, the one who goes with us. And it says specifically, his rod and staff comfort us. So the rod and staff probably don't make that much sense to modern ears. The staff has two meanings. Firstly, <clears throat> a staff gives rest. You know, the shepherd would have used it as a crutch, something uh, to lean on as they walked around. But secondly, the staff was a guide. So the shepherd would use it to guide the sheep into where they needed to be. So God's staff for us is that part of his nature, which means that as we intentionally uh, lean on and lean into him, we too can find rest. We too uh, can be led to a place where we find peace and restoration from the chaos of the shadow. <clears throat> and the rod, it wasn't a separate or a second instrument. It was that curly bit at the end of the staff. And it was used um, to pull the sheep out of danger, to protect them from predators. The rod was also a symbol of love. The shepherd used to use it to count the sheep to make sure they were all there. 
And for us as Christians, being under God's rod means that he counts us as his own and offers us his continual presence and protection. Yeah, many of you uh, will know our story of when our daughter Millie died. <clears throat> it was a real uh, shadow of, of death time and I daily, for uh, probably five or six months, cried to Jesus, Jesus, I need you. But I remember saying to someone quite early on, um, within the first couple of weeks, that I was a bit worried that I maybe wasn't uh, feeling it fully, that I was kind of almost doing too okay. It was as if I was being uh, emotionally protected at various times from, I guess, feeling the, the full force of what had actually happened. And the peace that I experienced and the emotions, um, they just didn't seem to match one another. The, the, uh, I seemed to have greater peace than um, the circumstances would have suggested. Uh, of course, I, I come to realise that it was an entirely supernatural thing. And the day after Millie died... Uh, I had some time on my own and there was a rocking chair at the end of uh, my hospital bed. I, I, I suddenly looked at this rocking chair and saw Jesus. It, it was so tangible, it, it, it felt so real. And I saw Jesus in the rocking chair holding Millie, rocking her safe in his arms. And I knew then, I knew then that she was safe in his arms and the intensity of the sadness that swept through my whole body found some relief. You know, Jesus, the person who is peace, the person who is rest, the person who is protection, he comes and actually sits right with us in the midst of whatever the shadow of death is. He walks that journey with us. And what I experienced during those early hours, days and months after Millie died, <clears throat> yes, there were huge amounts of sadness and lots of crying, but huge amounts of relief and peace. And it, it wasn't made up. It, it, it wasn't pretending. You can't pretend that stuff when something so devastating happens. But supernaturally, the very person who is peace was right there with me. Of course, I wouldn't have chosen for that to happen. But, but actually, it's often in the shadow of death times. It's often in those experiences that we really find out who God is. A place of great pain, but also a place of indescribable transformation. I've heard some say, yeah, but the darkness from living under the shadow of death, it, it just gets too much sometimes. It takes over my thinking and my emotions. Yeah, I get that. I really get that. And probably for me, in the middle of the night, I would wake up regularly during that time. Probably it's one of our most vulnerable times. And I would wake up and I just got into the habit of immediately plugging my earphones in and listening either to worship music or a sermon that I downloaded so that I didn't give hideous thoughts any room. I learnt to immediately lean into Jesus to rest in him, to find his peace and his presence in the middle of the night. Yeah, undoubtedly, we are right now collectively living under the shadow of death in the form of this virus. And for some of us, it's not just this virus. There's a whole heap of other stuff going on too. 
God's nature and character is the same now as it was for David when he wrote that psalm. It's the same now as it was when Millie died. He is alive and he counts us as his own, offering us his peace and his presence as a place of rest from the swirling emotions. But there's something else I want us to think about. When I heard that phrase, shadow of death, my mind immediately went to another shadow in scripture. It's the shadow of Peter in Acts 5. As Peter walked around, people would bring uh, their sick and lay them on mats, uh, just so that as Peter walked by, his shadow would pass over them and they would uh, be healed. Shadows have enormous power. The shadow of death is hard because it breeds fear. But under the shadow of Peter, there was life and healing, pointing people to heaven, which is supernaturally right here, right now. The world needs a church that doesn't give in to the shadow of death, which is fear, and leads to this kind of heads down, uh, I'm just going to get through it type way of being. The world needs a fearless church that has learned how to walk through the valley of the shadow of death so that we can walk with others through hurt and loneliness and grief and illness and whatever their shadow might be. The world needs a church that carries the message of hope that demonstrates that it lives not uh, even under an alternative shadow as, as wonderful and as life-giving as Peter's was, but that looks to heaven itself, that looks to who God is, to his kingdom, from which uh, Jesus is supernaturally present with us, bringing life, bringing rest, bringing restoration, creativity, and ushering in the new thing. You know, uh, as an aside, I think it's interesting that the way the charismatic part of the church has previously run seems to be being shut down right now. So we can either say, this is just too difficult, or we can look to heaven and say, Lord, what are you doing and how can we join in with this? What does being the church look like for us now, what is it you're doing? Speak to us, Lord. Let's not give in to saying it's too difficult, but instead to say, Lord, show us the way. I'm going to end with this. If you feel like that you are living under a particular shadow of death right now, if fear, low mood, disappointment, anxiety, or you're regularly feeling, this is too hard, uh, it's not worth it, please can I encourage you to do two things. Firstly, ask Jesus to be present with you. Secondly, get your Bible and to remind yourself of who God is. And if you're not sure where to look, either start reading through the gospel stories and ask yourself, what does this tell me about who God is, about his nature and character? Or just Google God's nature and character in scripture and a whole load of stuff will come up. And just uh, reflect on that as you read through those passages. Ask the Holy Spirit to use uh, these truths to transform how you see life right now. That you see it from heaven's perspective, not from the perspective of your circumstances. And let's pray. Father, you count us as your own. You promise us your presence. You promise to give us your peace, to give us a place of rest, to guide us. And so, Holy Spirit, would you come? As we look to heaven, would you come and meet with us? Lord, you, you say to us that you are here flooding over our uncertainties, over our questions, over our feelings. I pray that we will be so aware 
of your presence with us. And Father, would you come right now in the power of your spirit, spirit and minister peace and rest deep down within our beings where we're feeling worn out, where we're feeling anxious, where we're struggling with low mood. Would you bring your hope, Lord?
So we're going to come to a time of communion now. Um, so you want to make sure you've got some bread and wine or juice, whatever you're going to use. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Would you send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and shared it with his disciples saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, would you send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. Amen. So please uh, be free to share the bread and wine with one another. The body of Jesus broken for you. The body of Jesus broken for you. Your blood shed for me, my whole eternity. Your grace shown to me. The blood of Jesus gives me life. And now I see your broken body is my. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. So send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you uh, for joining us this morning. If you would like to contact us or ask for prayer, then please use the details that will come up at the end. And 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning, you are really welcome to join us for a Zoom coffee and chat. And the details for that will also come up at the end. So this week, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.